Welcome everybody, thank you for watching my podcast. I am Aurimas Kamantauskas, event organizer and owner of the company Rekuri and uh, Ideas and Trend Festival Revolution. And I'm happy and proud to have my special guest in this conference and in this podcast, Stefan Nilsson from Hi. Sweden. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm happy to have you here second year. Yeah, second time. Uh, second time. How are you? I'm oh, good. Uh, it's warmer than expected. It's very <laughs> yeah. hot. Actually. Everyone's surprised about how hot it is. Uh, but uh, I mean, the seminar is hot. It was busy. It was a good seminar. Also last year, but last year was like enormously big. Yeah. This is more in the city, but also enormously intense. We realized a new advertisement for Vilnius. Okay. Um, have you seen them? No. No? I want to show you, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, because it's interesting uh, to know your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can absolutely understand why it's a scandal. Yeah. How to get your attention? How you are choosing the events? Uh... I think about that too. <laughs> I don't have expectations necessarily to go there for food, but I go there to, to hang out and meet people. I think that if I'm sort of basically getting a guarantee that I will be meeting interesting people, I would absolutely go. Do the brands still need uh, some specific guests or, or clients? Getting them into the events or it's enough just to have influencers and to have a lot of uh, posts and stories. You're touching on, 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 on a difficult question, which is like, how should we work with social media and influencers? Uh, and how do we work with brands and social media and influencers? It's like, it's super difficult because it's changing, everything's changing so fast, constantly, and, and who's invited and who's not. I think that a brand should have the self-esteem enough to be like strong. They should be in the first room, not the celebrity or the influencer. So the brand should be in the first room. What kind of brands are trending now? The fast fashion is still there. Uh, I'm not talking about couture, uh, but I'm talking fast fashion. They're quite hungry uh, and they're quite willing to do things. Uh, also, um, spirits and drinks are there. Beauty have been there for a while, but I think it's, it's losing its ground a bit right now. Um, because it had such a strong peak. Uh, interior design is absolutely dropping like a bomb. How to create a trend, but not to follow them? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you need to stand outside. The answer is very, it sounds simpler than it is. Uh, a, a trendsetter needs to not follow trends and don't care about trends and therefore become a trendsetter. I saw your presentation and you spoke about... Uh, Did I do good? Yeah, very good, very <laughs> fast. <laughs> it's uh, very much you. Yeah, I have like 30 minutes and I need to cover everything, so yeah. Yeah, so people loves you, people are happy that <laughs> yeah. you are here. Yeah. And um, you spoke about uh, 2025 yeah. and uh, the models uh, are smiling, yeah. Yeah? happy yeah. faces. Uh, the humor is a trend or is a... Is a fake smile or a real smile? Uh, what makes a trend? I think that I think the smiling. I, I think again the the bigger concept of the smiling thing that I talked about, which is happiness. It's like we're in like so much yearning and longing for something that's positive. Uh, we're in a world right now where everything is grim and difficult. I mean, you are closer to Putin than we are in Sweden, and I'm scared of Putin. Uh, so. Um, therefore, like, and we also have the recession, and we have climate changes, and and uh, I mean everything is like so scary right now. So we're looking, our eyes are wandering to the things that brings joy and makes us happy, and and therefore seeing the eyes or seeing the face of a smiling person is something that sort of like makes us like, ah, oh, that's I like that brand because it has a smiling person. I mean, again, we've all seen like images of people in fashion being like. And no one wants that today. Instead, you want the smiliness and openness. And, and as I said, I think that this is a long trend and this is grow. And we're going to see that. And it's kind of like a funny angle is to see that we're going to be smiling more. So 2025, we'll have like this nice smile where we show teeth. And then you're going to have the frantic smile 2026 when you show gum going like. 
<laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that grows. We'll see how that grows. Have you heard about some trends, uh, how to get uh, more tourists into the city? Um, how to yeah, attract them? I, I, I think that I think that the tourism industry itself is very conservative. Uh, I think they're kind of slow on, on trends. Um, what I see is that culture is a strong bearer for, it's a strong reason for people to go to a city. Culture meaning like right now people are loving sculpture parks. You know, you want to see a nice sculpture and you want to take your picture of it and post on social media. So sculpture parks is something that's very easy to do and I see that more and more are doing that. Uh, but culture in general, if there's like an open Art festival. I know that in winter time, a lot of like us cities in the northern Europe, we have like light festivals. We work with tree lights and everything because, and that's also part of the culture. Uh, so yeah, but I think that the whole tourism industry is super conservative. They're more into like, okay, uh, how can we make money from soccer games? How can we make? And I think that's that's okay, but that's not where the fun is. How you are picking the country uh, where you've never been before? Do you have any expectations or, or some to, legends? Or, or? I have a new country. I went to a new place a few weeks back and I'm going to a new country in summer actually. I went to... When I, I, I am a very culturally driven person of course. So I went to Mallorca for the first time. Have you been to Mallorca? No. No, this is my first time. So, uh, and what you do is you read on, and you want to read, but it, you don't want to read about. I want to find. Of course, you want to find the top ten attractive things to see, but you want to find the other things that are also like the hidden gems, the unexpected things. That's what's the one you want to find. So I did that, um, and I have my tools, which is basically googling around. There's some sources on social or on web that I like, um, but it's also very easy to use the Google map to like enlarge and look and like, okay, so there's a church, I'll go there and see what happens there. And, and then like now when I'm in Vilnius and I have spare time, I'm just walking around and being trying to be open. It's like, oh, that's a nice house. You know, it's interesting, uh, walking now using this uh, Google map, yeah. you can take the shortest way yeah. and you will never see yeah. what happens in the next street and you can miss yeah. some very interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm not sure I like this yeah. uh, Google do, map. Do you want to know my, my best secret tip? This yeah. is a secret. No, not a secret. But I mean, when I do, when I do walk and I have like a, a, I need a five minute pause or three minute pause, I open my phone, you go to Google Maps and then you type in sites, simply the word sites. Okay. And it will show you the nearest things that are, uh, things nearby, your block where you are on the map that be worth seeing. Could be like a graffiti design or it could be like street art. It could be like a entrance of a house. So do that and you walk a bit and then go sites and then you'll get a suggestion and you can skip it uh, or you can go look at it. I found an amazing uh, museum in Mallorca when I was there just by doing that. So yeah, I like to, I do, I've done it here as well when I'm in Vilnius and walking around. I've been here a few times, so I'm, I mean, I've seen so much. Is it trendy, Vilnius? How do you see that? Um, I think, I think it's uh, everlasting or long lasting, but I think that one angle that Vilnius has, which is trending, is authenticity. I think it's very honest in that sense. I also like that Vilnius have a lot of like culture, which I think it's their own. For instance, the way you decorate the, the doorways of like bakery shops and cafes and restaurants, like they're full of wicker baskets or flowers or, or installations. I don't, I haven't seen that to that extent uh, in any other city in the world. So you are tra traveling so much. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you are traveling a lot and taking yeah. uh, piece by piece yeah. from every country. What yeah. you will take with you from Vilnius this time? Um, from, from Vilnius, I think it's. I think that way to sort of like. I think it's unique that you are allowed to, and it stays that sort of like decoration, and you actually bring out the content from the inside to the to the people who are passing by. I think that's definitely unique. Um, you can compare to maybe like fruit stands or flower stands, how people were like when they were selling things, fruits or flowers again, but putting that on, on the streets. But here you take out basically the restaurant and put it on the facade. I think that's definitely new and inviting and, and nice, nice eye catching. So yeah, it's difficult to walk around with your mobile phone at the same time because you're stumbling on like, oh yeah, that's a nice facade. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll, that will bring back. And I think also, I think people are very, very nice looking and also very nice here. 
we realized a new advertisement for Vilnius. Okay. Uh, have you seen them? No. No? I want to show you, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, because it's interesting uh, to know your opinion. Yeah. It was done for, I think, uh, German and uh, British. Uh, okay. Vilnius. Vilnius, the pearl of Eastern Europe. When the traveler arrives to Vilnius, they are immediately charmed by the joyful and welcoming attitude of its people. Its cozy little streets and rich architecture are a true photographer's paradise, where the past meets the latest technology just like every other European capital. As a highly stylish city, Vilnius is something for every kind of cereal shopper. And of course, its vast array of gastronomic options, together with its lively nightlife, will blow your mind. So, what are you waiting for? Come to Vilnius and embark on an unforgettable adventure. Absolutely understand why it's a scandal. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Could you please comment because <laughs> uh, Lithuanians, most of them, are angry about this advertisement. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I don't like it. No, I think I mean absolutely. I, I can I, I kind of understand what they wanted to do, which is play with prejudice. Um, it's the same thing with the Swedish scene. Everyone's naked and everyone's having sex suicidal and drinks in Sweden, but it's like you, you could do it funny, but you need to do it quick and then move on to the other story. The, the other story that they wanted to show was 10 seconds and the other thing was two minutes. So, oh, no, no, I think it was strange. So it was strange. Will we have more tourists or we will <laughs> lose them? <laughs> it's like, I, I think I think we cho we choose destinations now for different reasons. I mean, this is also depending on who we are. Uh, I think that money right now will play an important role. Um, I went to Prague now in spring, and I'm not going to be talking bad about Prague too much, but it's gotten super, super expensive. I mean, a beer in Prague now costs eight, nine euros. Per beer, so it's a I've been super... in Prague uh, three weeks ago, yeah. and I said nothing changed. N just no, the yeah. price of the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gotten super, super expensive. So I think that um, you want to go. And I hear also when people are talking now about doing things. Like for instance, I hear the wine industry now looking for like new regions where wine is cheaper because everyone's looking at price right now. 2024, everyone's looking at price. So if you can do an unaffordable vacation here, absolutely, that's, that would be appealing, I think. And I think that a lot of people would be willing to go to Vilnius because I think that food and drink, I was texting a friend now, food and drink here is absolutely super, super affordable and nice and good. How it goes into, turns into the new trends, uh, this uh, low price uh, traveling? Uh. Um, I, I, think that, I think that also when you're struggling, if you have now, during the recession, people have been struggling with money. Uh, and then the, what, I think it's important to treat yourself to like, at least now I can have a three course meal. Uh, I mean, I think treating yourself is important uh, and having that. But I think also it's important that a lot of cities like Prague and, and also Vilnius is like, um, and also in, in Poland, stay true to your cuisine. I think that don't have the pizzeria uh, all over and don't do tacos. I want to eat like Czech food when I'm in Prague. I want to eat Polish food when I'm in Warsaw. So it's like, yeah, stay true to that. 
Okay, so any advices how to help with this advertisement? Uh, how to um, make them trendy and really uh, engage uh, the tourists? I think, I think uh, 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 the word unexpected is nice because I think that it is unexpectedly nice, uh, Vilnius. Uh, I remember the first time I was here, I was also here for work. This is like 10, 15 years ago. I was surprised that so many uh, were speaking English so good for instance, and it's of course because everyone has been working abroad. So everyone's like super fluent in English because they have been working abroad. Not necessarily because of school, that's what yeah. I'm saying, because everyone has been working a year in England and, or a year somewhere else, and then come back and starting to work here. So everyone is super friendly, super service-minded, and super well-spoken, and, and yeah, nice. So it's unexpectedly nice. Um, I think that when I'm texting my friend now today, and I think, say to him, because he's coming on Monday, uh, I tell him, I, didn't, I don't set an agenda, just walk around. Enjoy, take your time. This is what slow design could be. Uh, this could be like slow sightseeing, uh, because everything is like walkable. I mean, the, basically, Vilnius is very walkable, so you can go to the Republic, Uspenshi, how do you say it? Us, 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 Us. That one. You can walk from, from that one, the, the Republic, to the main square, uh, and you can walk everywhere. It, it takes a while, but it's worth you know, the walk. So do slow, slow tourism, I would say. Eat, watch people, look at houses, uh, clean streets, uh, beautiful people. Uh, everyone speaks English. Everyone's service-minded and friendly, so yeah. So I think we changed into the very beautiful city, and that's why yeah. people was angry. Why? Why we are showing yeah. us in yeah. an ugly way? Yeah. Also, I think that a lot of cities, like also Stockholm, people tend to leave the city. Like there are lots like, okay, leave the city as soon as possible. And I think we should have them stay in the city. Um, do more in the city. Do more in Stockholm. Do more in Prague. Do more in Vilnius. Not leave. Okay. Let's talk now about other trends. About yeah. events. Are you often going to the events? Uh, I mean, our world is basically now built up around events. Um, the recession now, how long have we had it? Two years? A year and a half? Two, two years almost? Uh, people were starting to, starting to think about not doing events. Uh, but now people are experimenting with new kinds of events. Um, so yeah, I do three events. I go to three events per week at least, I would say. Uh, but it could be small. It could also be enormous. Uh, but I think also... We, last week in, in Stockholm, we had Taylor Swift, her concerts, yeah. uh, and that's a kind of event, that's a huge event, and we're gonna see, I think we're gonna see more of those like enormous large-scale events. It doesn't have to be like a, a concert, but it could be something else. It could be like a theater festival or whatever, but I mean, yeah. How to get your attention? Uh, how you are choosing the events? Uh, um, I think about that too. <laughs> I think about events and I think that I should say no or, or I should be pickier. I think it's about... I think it's about relationships, especially when it's local, when, I, when I'm in Stockholm, when I go to these events. Um, I'm not so... I don't have expectations necessarily to go there for food, but I go there to, to hang out and meet people. I think that if I'm sort of basically getting a guarantee that I will be meeting interesting people, I would absolutely go. Uh, that's a driver. I want to see and, and meet interesting people. Um, Less and that, food, more talks? Or? Yeah, I think social aspect is important. Um, because that, uh, we need that also in these times. We need to meet each other and hang around. Uh, and I think also that's the plus side of, of events because it, it sort of brings us together. It also, most time I get jobs. I'm a freelancer, uh, and most times I get job is through an event because I met someone and we're like, oh, we need to, and then we'll talk uh, work the day after. But we meet at the event. It's like, oh, we need to do something, and then we follow up. How the red carpet are changing in the Stockholm? Are there more influencers on the red carpet or? I think it's, got, oh, I don't want to talk bad about it. Hopefully they're not watching. I think that red carpet is like played out its role a bit because we, we don't have any magazines right now. So who are publishing the red carpets? 
Uh, and also basically you're seeing also the same thing with how TV shows are now evolving. It's going to be every nationality has the same, circ it's, it's unique circumstances, but it's some, the same kind of evolution, which is like you have the same like 20 celebrities turning up on every TV show. And they're going to be the same 20 people that's going to the red carpet. So Only 20 in Sweden? <laughs> I don't know, it feels like okay. it's 20, but okay. it feels like it's 20. Um, uh, so it's kind of like boring. And I think that also, I think that red carpet is difficult. Um, but what professions, uh, what kind of people are on this uh, top I think 20? That, I think that the, the goal is to have something with uh, moving images, I would say, which is like TV or, or films. That would be like the number one thing. Or And then of course, um, you do have some of the fashion events where you have influencers. Uh, influencers are big in Sweden, but they're not so much on the red carpet, especially that's not ending up in the magazines. Um, I think the whole magazine industry is challenged. So again, who's going to publish the images? Uh, where are they going to turn up? So do the brands still need uh, some, I don't know, specific guests or, or clients? and and? Are they getting them into the events or it's enough just to have influencers and to have uh, uh, a lot of uh, posts and stories? You're touching on, 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 on a difficult question, which is like, how should we work with social media and influencers? Uh, and how do we work with brands and social media and influencers? It's like, it's super difficult because it's changing, everything's changing so fast, constantly, and, and who's invited and who's not. I think that I think that a brand should have the self-esteem enough to be like strong. They should be in the first room, not the celebrity or the influencer. So the brand should be in the first room. Uh, the influencer or the the celebrity should be like supporting the brand. Uh, we sometimes we tend to forget that, and we like you know, only focus on the star, but for, don't forget the brand, especially if the brand is the host. If it's a movie, it's a different thing, but if, the, if you're doing like a cocktail session, then the so focus should be on the brand that's serving the cocktails. What kind of brands are trending now and um, showing the trends on advertisement, events, uh, engagement? Uh... Um, I think that, uh, Fashion is still, fast fashion is still there. Uh, I'm not talking about couture, uh, but I'm talking fast fashion. They're quite hungry uh, and they're quite willing to do things. Uh, also, um, spirits and drinks are there. Beauty have been there for a while, but I think it's, it's losing its ground a bit right now um, because it had such a strong peak. Uh, interior design is absolutely dropping like a bomb uh, because no one is focusing on, on interior design right now. Yeah, and, and the whole food scene, of course. I see, I see actually that um, uh, restaurants themselves are trying to build, become brands more. Um, so sort of like you don't necessarily go to the restaurant so-and-so, but you actually want to be like so-and-so restaurant. Uh, so you're building a, you know, a hype around the actual restaurant uh, and the chef and, and the restaurant owner. So they're, they're getting bigger um, and you want to be at the right restaurant or not necessarily getting the right drinks, but be at the right restaurant. Last year you spoke about local, super local, yeah. hyper local. Now we are talking that uh, shops are coming back yeah. Yeah, and, um, and you told us that uh, the trend, it's uh, five years term, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. About, it depends, sometimes, as I said, it can, sometimes it goes faster, but this is an approximate, yeah. What, what happens is you need to have stages of verification uh, and, and sometimes, as I said, sometimes a thing can boom and therefore die quickly or something sl grows slowly but surely. It can also wither or it, or it can be paused and then come back. So, but the analysis that I'm doing is that these are the major things, th these five topics that I've had is, is where are our most important lifestyle changers of, uh, for a five-year period to come. But how to create a trend, but not to follow them? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you need to stand outside. And the answer is very, it sounds simpler than it is. Uh, a, a trendsetter needs to not follow trends and don't care about trends and therefore become a trendsetter. So therefore, normally I find trendsetters in, for instance, art, uh, people who are doing things that stand out in art, and I can see a thought or a, a 
a color or, or, or a shape or something that they are doing because they like it and and they're not part of like a consumer driven world where I am in uh, and and you can see how if, if people are also starting to look at that artist doing that then you see that okay people are finding inspiration and taking that inspiration and turn it into products so but the 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 first seed needs to be from someone who is not involved in the commercial world. That's why also people in the 90s looked at people on the streets, uh, looking at fashion, at street fashion. Now, now everything is commercialized, so, but early on, like the punk movement was super uncommercial and therefore you could find inspiration in that movement. Now it's art, because some art is still uncommercial. And why nostalgia uh, taking over? And uh, nostalgia, we've seen nostalgia come and go, uh, and I see that it's going, uh, and, uh, and what's new is that it has that re resemblance, like you feel you've seen it before, uh, so it's not a specific day, year. Uh, previously, we've always been looking back in fashion and every, every other industry, we've been looking back at different decades or ages, uh, and now it's more, more lucid, so it's flowing. So it's like, I, I think I've seen, I remember the 70s or 80s. So that's where we're going to. Uh, and we do that because I think the recession is also right now hindering us from doing new things. It, it's hindering us from having a self-esteem uh, and it's hindering us from experimenting and doing new things. So we're holding back on that and therefore, so very few new things are coming out to market. And therefore, we're looking back at nostalgia. 90s is gone, now 70s are gone. No, I think 90s can be there as well, um, depending on who you are. For me, I'm looking back at, uh, I'm in, you know, the 80s, that's why I have this. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking at the 80s because I remember the 80s, I have a, a feeling about what the 80s was all about. And of course, it's a decade. Lots of things happened during the 80s. You have, uh, you have the Iraq, uh, Iran-Iraq wars, uh, the, the fall of the, the Berlin Wall. So you have different things happening in the it's, it's a 10-year time but the 80s is sort of like a, 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 a an, an ambience an idea of where we're going let's, that I'm going let's talk about Eurovision, uh, Eurovision are you a big yeah. fan of it I love Eurovision really yeah, let's I do. talk about Malmö and, uh, <laughs> how do you like did you go no but yeah. uh, I, I was watching on the yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I think they did well I think they did really well I think it's I think it's part of the same thing as we talked about just now which is like the Taylor Swift I think it's a it's a mass mass event it's such a big event and you can see it's such a big event and and also um, with the Taylor Swift concert you want it to be a big event you want it to be like enormous you don't want it to be like small scale and uh, so that's how Eurovision was it was a huge event what trends you could uh, mention uh, from the last Eurovision I mean, what, what they did was uh, they were trying to bring in the audience so you could hear more of the audience, good and bad, because you heard brewing, uh, but also you could see a lot more of the audience. And I think that also was from the TV production's perspective, like the, how they sort of like wanted to make it more of a, an honest or authentic feeling, uh, because authenticity is, again, a, a mega trend as well. And we would like to see things that are real or, or liable. Um, so that's, that's definitely one thing that you saw. Uh, I think uh, uh, the host was uh, good enough. Uh, I like how they have their Swinglish. Uh, they have not a thick English accent, but they do have a Swedish accent. And I think that's good. I think it's like, again, this part of the authenticity. Again, you have this large event and there is someone on stage saying like things like, and hello, Malmö, it's like, it, I think it's, taking it like down a bit from this, or a, a proper like super shine event to something like close. But do you think Petra still need a help? Uh, I think uh, she can do it alone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, again, hope no Swedes are watching. Now, I don't think that Marlin added anything, but I mean, that's okay. I mean, she could have been there. Petra was definitely good on, on her own, but I think also no, um, yeah, it's okay. I don't hate her. I don't hate Marlin. Petra was better than Marlin, but Marlin could have been. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. Could you bring Petra, please, next year to re a revolution conference? <laughs> yeah, the thing is, like, she's not that funny in real life. No, really? <laughs> she's okay, but I mean... But we will so. put her on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask her. I'll ask okay. her. I'll ask okay. her. Yeah. Are you friends? Not really close, no. But Stockholm is a small town, so yeah. Really? Yeah, Stockholm is a small town, yeah. Yeah, definitely.
but uh, people love Spectra. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she was good. She was good. I think it was a good. It was a good show. Um, I think. Uh, I think also Lithuania did good with their song. Uh, you like it? I do. I do. Um, yeah. How was it? Good? Can you sing it? Um, the, th the, uh, the funny thing is, um, uh, one part of the song is uh, he sings almost the name of a Swedish pop artist. Really? Uh, almost. It's like, because uh, he sings in Lithuanian. Uh, and the uh, pop artist's name is called Salem Al Fakir. And he sings somewhere in the song, Salem Al Fakir, dum dum. And, and uh, that's part of the verse, so it's not in the refrain, <laughs> but regardless. So you have a Swedish version of, <laughs> of our song. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. And it was good, it was good. I think that all the Baltic states are good, and it was nice to see all the Baltic states in, uh, in the finals. Yeah, everybody's yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's your turn to win sometimes, so yeah, eventually. Yeah. How, to, how to win Eurovision? <laughs> you, you, know, you know the recipe. I know the rules, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think again, I think I think you just need to have a good song, and I think I mean if you look at uh, uh, speaking about nostalgia, if you look if you look at when Finland won with uh, Lordi, Lordi was super strange, but it uh, it is actually a good song, and that's the thing. You need to have a good song. What do you think about these candles? Um, <laughs> abs uh, they're absolutely it's it's absolutely right to talk about it. Uh, the two scandals, I think you're meaning. One is, of course, Israel, and I think that, I think that, Israel has the right to participate. I think personally, uh, I think Israel is uh, overacting on Palestine, absolutely. But it's a different thing between having a song, etc. And I think that Russia should still be banned. Yeah, and then you, you could talk about the banning of the Dutch artist, um, and I think that was, that, I think that was sloppy. I wonder what happened. And no one has talked, but I mean, why? Why ban someone the day before? Yeah, yeah so no, that was sloppy. Israel was okay, the Netherlands was sloppy. Yeah. Uh, who was your favorite? Uh, I had, I had um, Switzerland and uh, Croatia fairly high up. Um, I, th I think that also when you saw the betting, if Israel would have won, it would have been a total scandal but it would have been a total, total, total riot. Uh, but it's funny that it got so many of the um, viewers' votes and not from the jury's votes. And it's, again, it says something. The jury feels they cannot vote for it, but the people did. Um, so yeah, well, uh, Italy was good. Well, well, of course I watch it, of course I watch it. I think it's, uh, it's like the Olympic Games of TV or something, yeah, it's fun. Back to the trends, yeah. uh, do you have any guess uh, what will be trendy on, not? 2025, but uh, 2026 or, or later on? Um, yeah, I do. Um, what we're seeing is um, a continuation of the happiness trend or the change trend. So for the viewers who did not see my seminar, I talked about five things and one of them was happy because we, times are grim, so we're looking for happy things. And, and one thing is also like the word change. We want to have something that's new, that's different, because everything's mundane, we've done the same thing for a long, long time, so we need change. And change can be funny, so therefore they're kind of like linked together. Um, so the continuation of this, the evolution of this, is like I see a lot of things that you talk about emotion, emotional design, you want to feel something, or, 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 or you want to talk about what you feel. So, and this is again the, the other side of the commercialism that we have. Uh, so everything is like brands and commercial and status and, and what about the other aspect? I, I was, so one, of the, one of my most important uh, d design events is the, the week in, in Milan. Uh, and at that week, I met some Americans. They did an installation about like AI now is taking over, which it is, and everything's gonna look the same or very super strange. But what do we feel? What do we feel about these objects? Instead of like fixating on like everything is doable, what do we feel? Um, what about if your house starts, catches fire? What do you save first? You, you will save the thing that you feel the most about, the feel, thing that you have like a nostalgic emotion to, uh, or a memories to. You will not save the, the expensive thing, but rather the thing that you feel, pictures or whatever. That, these are the things that you're saving. So how can we, feel more? How can we get more emotionally involved? And 
to yesterday, yesterday, I saw a graduation show from one of the design schools um, uh, in Stockholm, and one guy had this installation, he had three different kinds of chairs. And he's like, I need to know you, so what do you feel? So the solution was not necessarily to make three chairs, but actually, so like, what do we feel for this chair? What do you feel for this chair? And what do you feel? And I think that's something we're gonna be talking about 2026, emotion. Um, but also when I see that, because I, one way for me to, to work with trans is to like constantly talking, as you realize I'm doing. But I can also see like, if uh, people are waking up, you see a tingling thing in their eye, and you do have that now too, as well, because I also did a, a retail discussion, and I was also talking about we need to have retail that's emotional, and not like rational, but emotional. How can we have emotional retail? And you get the same sort of like tingling sensation in their eyes, going like, yes there's something there, uh, and that's like a new thing, and that's a seed of a trend. And now we're gonna see more concrete example, how people are concretely working with emotion in design or retail or events, but the answer is we want to feel more. That's where we are, 2026. Okay. I feel you will come next year to Vilnius <laughs> again and you will share uh, the new yeah, trends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking about emotional design yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, thank you. I'm thank happy you. to have you here and uh, enjoy the rest now of let's the. Drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, press like, and share, and ask or comment. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Stefan will answer to your questions and uh, follow him on Instagram. Yay! Trent Stefan. Thank you. Thank you.